In part two, up two, I will look at Dicky Scruggs from the point of view of Wendell uh, uh, Curtis Wilkie, and um, rather than the, the curse, uh, which is the the analogy of the curse of the House of Atreus, and choosing instead the ambush perhaps of uh, the, um, the concept of how ungodly we live in terms of our time here on earth. And this refers to Samuel Beckett. Dickey's uh, denial is placed on, as I said very early, when Wilkie quotes, um, and all of this is over. Uh, are you going to be able to tell me how I got mixed up with um, these guys? Now that's denial, of course, and not pretending to be a psychoanalyst here. But when we have a man who is in this, in the modern sense of of the Greek tragedy. Um, a man better than we are, an Agamemnon who kills his daughter and gets gets the wind and sails away, um, eventually having to take his punishment. And his punishment is harsh, very harsh, because he returns uh, to an empty house and to death. And this was hubris. This was the idea of finding out why all of these people get you into it. And in the case of Agamemnon, it was certainly Menelaus, but of course it was also the curse and the gods. In the case of Estragon and Vladimir, as I tend to think of Scro and Mo here, the, 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 the tragic part of, of this is that you are ensnared by an ambush. And the ambush is, as Wilkie makes clear in the, in the first part of his, his book, a, a, a group of antagonists, and he calls them antagonists, which is not a word that you would find uh, very useful, except if you wanted us to think in terms of Greek tragedy. And raising the level of the man is not hard to do. In our country, we simply have a creation of wealth, and when the wealth uh, is used, um, the, um, the concept of wealth has a, a believable source for making and, and breaking the loss of it being the breaking of a person's uh, will. And we all admire, and I know this is certainly the spirit of modern civilization, much more the, the person who has the equipment, which is more, more of a condition that we have, condition of the, the human condition, the, the life we live, is what we what we make and what we 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 have to spend and to indulge in. These would be called indulgences in some way. But the analogy of the the crash or the fall or the denial which accompanies this is listed on on the principal characters under the defendants and then under their antagonists. And you can't miss this. I mean, you don't have to know what perpetia means or, or anagonoresis or any of those uh, terms from Aristotle's Ars Poetica, but you certainly know what a protagonist is and an antagonist. And obviously he addresses this in the very part. I realize I'm skimming, but it's Johnny Jones. He's the antagonist. Uh, Grady Tolson is an antagonist. 
Alden Lucky is an antagonist. Robert Wilson is an antagonist. Charlie Merkel is an antagonist. Um, these are strictly viewed by the author, uh, author, the writer, the biographer of Dickie Scruggs. Uh, and then, of course, of all things, uh, George Dale, um, but mostly uh, of all things, uh, the judge Henry Lackey. Now, to be absolutely pointed, this is denial in, in the first order. And I've read the book, and I'm, I'm only skimming parts of this. I want, I want to bring to the front something of what a biographer who is, say, lesser than Carl Sandburg, or, or as I mentioned, uh, um, the, um, the other... <clears throat> There's a number of great biographers, but Sandberg comes to, comes to my my mind, and I I really think of of um, people who have written about people like Lincoln, and uh, and there's there's a, a certainly a difference, uh, not a distinction exactly, but. Um, uh, Samuel Johnson, if we want to be very, very patently uh, bland about it, um, they all did something <clears throat> uh, when they wrote a biography to uh, make, um, to canonize. And a biographer is supposed to do something of that sort. What I see in, in this is the missing part it's a story of a man who is ambushed so to speak ambushed from the very beginning and i happen to be one of those uh, people who are part of the ambush although i'm not accredited with that i certainly uh, have to think about my own self in that term because i don't think he would be where he is literally where he is today had he not been uh, involved in some way i had no intention whatsoever of being one of the people who might be antagonistic uh, nor was i an ambusher but uh, he certainly was looking for a history of mississippi in the question he put to Curtis Wilkie on page four of Wilkie's book, and it sort of describes a kind of relationship, a gap in, in how you understand man who starts out with somewhat humble origins, although I don't really accept all of that. I mean, he went to military school, he, he had an opportunity, and the first thing you'll always hear from Dickie uh, from from the biographer of Dickie Scruggs is that he flew a plane. Not only a plane, but he was a carrier pilot, which is quite an achievement. But um, I I have also um, in in the impression of a lot of this. Uh, there is a tendency for for uh, an accuracy of betrayal of the evildoers, and the, there is something called the force, and and then there's the there's always something, and this happens to be a Roman character, Diane, uh, who's Dickie's wife. Um, she seems to sh sugary uh, sugar up a, a little of the. Of, of the things through Wilkie, uh, his use of her. I warned him, you know, or I was the one. Well, Diana was the Roman goddess of the hunt, and she was certainly the one who could keep the animals away. And yet, inappropriate as that may sound, there was certainly a lot of animalism out here. And, um, Certainly, this was not my 
my knowledge at the time, I knew some uh, Mississippi and had always been protesting her one way or another. I went through the same thing that Curtis Wilkie probably examined and knew of when um, he speaks um, uh, uh, or he writes, or I, I somehow have come across some of his background, and yet his his tendency as a writer is not to just completely so, um, put in a, a and he knows this because it wouldn't wouldn't be a seller. He, he's putting in a very accurate, detailed portrait. In the end, however, it seems to be most likely that what you see is a very sordid picture, which is a man who makes choices, intellectual choices, and in the creation of wealth, um, uh, there is a tendency that these people who are very um, very good at the creation of wealth, they have a tendency to play by the rules when it is perfectly okay, but when it is outside of, of uh, the, the reach, then tend to in, invent their own rules. Now, I knew Dickie as um, not encumbered, so to speak, by um, creation of new rules, um, or old rules, and he was, uh, as one person described him, a businessman who happened to have a law license. That's one part of the way to look at him. But in the, in the pursuit of the of the Master Settlement Agreement and the lawsuit of, of uh, Estragon and Vladimir. Um, there is this gulf of um, intrigue. And this book does have a great read. It's, it's a, it's, it's an, it, it's a, it is terribly good and it is, um, a, a, it is a, it, it is almost it, with if you can eliminate some of the um, some of the uh, peacock uh, adjectives and and some of the um, tendency for him to float down to New Orleans and use the uh, line Francaise um, in in a bit of, of um, and it seems to be fear a pair father and son. Uh, my French is vaguely good, but not that good. Um, his is probably New Orleans, and yet he puts these injections in. And as a style, it's not bad, but there's a lot of peacock in this and a lot of puffery that is not, you know, you could have chosen another word not to make, not to make his, his, uh, his subject matter uh, dull, and he certainly does not. But I don't think he he, he manages to elude the facts of Dickie's life. He was ambushed. He, he wasn't ambushed. If there was an ambush here, it was certainly not ambush without um, volition. He he had for himself. I made up his mind that he was going to be, in the Greek tradition, um, a, um, a, a person who was successful. And by success, we mean wealth and, in the Greek sense, a better man. And that's what he accomplishes. Um, you can't miss, though, some of the pathetic demons that, that, that come up and down. I don't think that his, his celebrity is worth the um, uh, exhaustive antagonism that it has. I think his celebrity should be muted, not because he hasn't deserved uh, a good um, 
a good bit of it, but because he made such a big deal of it, and certainly in references to people who weren't that weren't that uh, happy to hear it, um, as I was you know, sometimes the character who was the foil, or maybe Lear's fool, I don't know. Um, he had a, um, he seemed to have a bit of um, the person uh, tagged, Dickie was tagged as kind of a hurdy-gurdy guy, you know, he's missing a monkey. And yet, at the same time, he's he's got this wealth, this enormous wealth of of of, um, of ambition and 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 torture somehow. I don't I don't really uh, consider uh, the the entire piece as um, a difficult. Uh, read in terms of anything that happens. It's certainly not bemusing to me to see a lot of the, the things that happen. In fact, I knew, I knew some of the people, and uh, it was odd that uh, the the people who are seemingly in the force, the darker side, um, appear. The antagonists appear um, somewhat. Uh, on edge as they proceed through this. Um, but as all things have to find a a reasonable psychicality in terms of mindset, I would still have to render this a, a good book, a good read. And in some senses, if it were a a different character, it wouldn't have the same merit. But I think only one book is deserved here, and I find this to be a very good book in that sense. It certainly does apply um, formidably to uh, some of the things that we need uh, to understand toward toward uh, relationships with with uh, a man who is not better than we are, but a man who has greatly uh, enhanced his, his personal wealth on earth. And for that reason, because we are who we are today, uh, we simply have put most of us together on earth and said, Okay, you have this and that, and you are you are recognized for success not because you create you invented a salt vaccine, but because you have you have been a a, a player, and that's what we have today, and that's why our government is bailing out CEOs in um, and they're still getting bonuses, they're winners. And the unfortunate part about being a winner is as long as you can avoid jail and you can avoid uh, being caught at what you do, you probably didn't do it. And if you did it, uh, you should be in the right place at the right time. Certainly Mississippi is not the right place and hasn't been. And certainly Oxford wasn't the right place for or the right time for uh, uh, Dickie Scruggs and so summing up the 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 work that, that is put into this book is a is essentially um, a a product of a man who was authorized as a biographer and it is basically a, a biased uh, book uh, in, in fact uh, to the point of, of just being a savvy journalist he tries very hard not to be biased but the end result is when you deal with the facts uh, who where when why what you're going to come up with some invariably un, 
popular thoughts about your main character. Even though in the beginning you say you're a friend and in the end you say you're a friend, it's still, if you, if you stick to your trade and you stick to the questions and you follow them through, there's no way in the world that you can, can uh, um, uh, gloss over what is an obvious fact. As a matter of fact, some of the things uh, particularly related to Paul Minor are um, pretty seriously um, um, decadent, so to speak, knowing, knowing a little about it, uh, both of these characters. Uh, the fact is, this was not a man who created something, but he, he had a windfall. And his characters that he he renders in later life, um, after the master settlement agreement, simply a rendering of of capitalist skills, and he had those, and he has those. Um, but there are incumbencies. There are incumbencies that are related to the facts of rules and rule breaking and maybe when you reach the point in life as he did um, there was so much power in the hands of those people who had come together that since the other people had the tobacco industry had always been breaking rules it wasn't so unlikely that um, his own uh, dirty little secrets um, or their dirty little secrets could be found and he certainly pursued that with me and um, mostly um, it's like it's, it's like a, a, a sense of what you know about your own your own pattern of what happens in government and and um, how how you have contributed mostly to um, not to the salvation in any way of of the product of tobacco, other than to to accelerate um, a, a continuation of its use, and the end result being that you are able to capitalize on the profits. And I had a personal interest and two lawsuits and um, one includes a business um, in the federal lawsuit with Dickie Scruggs so um, and that would be M&S Enterprises and it involves um, two people according to what I knew and what he told me um, Dickie Scruggs and Paul Minor and their their ability to be a, a, a unit, at least in terms of of uh, owning a condominium together, and their personal personal um, references, mainly from a man whom I knew to be um, uh, very energetic and very capable of, of doing a lot of things, but not knowing a lot about anything. Um, in terms of, of tobacco, he was a negotiator and negotiated by and through uh, what seemed to be uh, things that seemed that fell from the roof, or he had a means of capturing it. And if this is ambush, as though it were cursed, um, Everybody would like to have a piece of that. And so in this longer representation, um, I would like to introduce you to uh, Dickie Scruggs and then how I met Dickie Scruggs in remembrance of that particular time in my life. I would like to um, somehow forget, but nevertheless, it created a, a, a vast impression on me which will never leave without some degree of, of um, passion and, and, and 
to some extent, a lot of hurt and a lot of anxiety and a lot of anguish. And for him, um, you know, maybe he deserves two books and maybe three, if you include uh, Grisham. But for this book and for this introduction to Dickie Scruggs, I certainly learned an awful lot about the the force, the others, the antagonists, and I already knew a lot about Dickie Scruggs from our meetings in our, our well, in the beginning and on through several years until he managed to capture another. Um, another person again that's probably an ambush too who knows um, I do mean that sarcastically but here I am today and he is where he is and we have uh, we have crossed uh, and gone on and so while this isn't the curse of uh, the House of Atreus, it certainly is a little bit probably where things stand, more like Beckett and waiting for Godot, the inevitable crushing blow of the unknown, the ungodly, and certainly the great distance between humanity and inhumanity and the devolution and the evolution of what we consider to be a better man than we are. The difference between the Greeks and the difference between modern capitalists.